Hi, this is Doug again for uh, Bug Amps, and uh, this is going to be a follow-up video to the previous video about the um, the bug bias that stops the blocking distortion. And I've just finished up this amp, you can see, and um, it's a push-pull 6v6 amplifier that is uh, capacitively coupled AB1 fixed bias. And so I've included the bug bias PCB in it. And we're going to, um, I've included on the PCB a way to turn bug bias on and off. And so today, this is going to be hopefully a quick video just to show you what happens when you have a traditional bias and then what happens when you enable the bug bias. And we're going to look at uh, the various voltages around the amplifier and the resulting waveform on the oscilloscope here. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to flip this amp upside down and uh, get everything hooked up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at here is um, the amplifier working normally. And so uh, bug bias is turned off, so the bias system is just acting like, you know, your average sort of resistive divider negative voltage into the, into the grid leak, into the, uh, the junction of the grid and capacitor. That's how it normally works here, and so that's how we've got it hooked up. I've got the signal generator set up so that um, it's not clipping the output waveform, and that means that it's also not clipping the, uh, the driver stage into the output stage. So um, the driver stage is not swinging above uh, zero volts. And so we'll turn this on, have a look. So what we're looking at here on voltage this is the uh, voltage on the grid of one of the two output tubes. Now, we're at uh, about 15 milliamps per side right now, so definitely class AB, um, kind of a cool bias setting on that. And um, that's a negative 30 on the grid of the 6v6 output pair. And so we're just looking at one of those right now. Um, but you'll see that when we turn this on, this negative voltage doesn't change, and that's how it should be, because uh, we're not clipping the amp yet. So here we go. So you see the waveform looks good. Uh, output still at negative 30. Um, hasn't moved. And um, all is well. This is how your capacitively coupled AB1 fixed bias stage is supposed to work. Um, but you'll notice we're only at 1.4 volts peak to peak here. And so um, this amp will clip if you go beyond that. And so definitely any DAC that you have um, feeding an amp like this, this amp clips at about half a volt RMS. And so if you were to give it the average maximum voltage of a DAC that you have around or a source, it's usually around two volts RMS. And so that's 5.6-ish peak to peak. And so in a second here, we're going to see what happens when you give this thing a big transient from your DAC that's uh, up to the maximum um, that your DAC could provide at 5.6. Let's do that. Go 5.6. So this is way, way into clipping, but still within the realm of possibility if you're really cranking up your, uh, your source into an amplifier like this. So here we go. Yikes. So Clipping, crossover distortion, big time. Uh, you can see it. Also, look at what happened to the negative voltage on the grid. Good grief. It went from negative 30 to negative 61. So this amplifier is blocking hard. Like this, this is nasty. <laughs> so I just wanted you to see that. So we turned off, we're back down to negative 30. See, it recovers pretty quickly, but still you see how quickly the crossover distortion sets in on a transient like that. Um, the other thing I want to show you is the output current of the tube itself. So when you go from class A to class B, the output to, uh, current naturally increases. That's what gives you the extra power of a class AB circuit versus a class A. Um, so the current on the cathode jumps, and so right now you can see 
I've just connected to the current uh, sense resistor on the cathode here, and you were sensing 15 milliamps, right? And so if we put, um, if we look at this current and we turn on our normal non-clipped signal here, you can see that it jumps from 15 to 40, and that's as it should be, that's what you want. But now, let's go, and we're going to have to just remember this number. So we're going to go back to 5.6 and so now we're doing that again, but we're going up to 49-ish. So remember, remember 49. I'll, I'll have to remember that. I'll try and remember 49. But remember that uh, 49 is sort of where we max out on the output current. And remember those output tubes are turning off because we went from negative 30 to negative 60 on the, uh, the grid voltage when it starts to block really bad like that. All right, so keep that in mind. Now what I'm gonna do is I've got these little jumpers here and these turn bug bias on. So I'm gonna do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is go back to the grid and we'll see that once again, our grid is at negative 30, just as it was before. And we're going to give it, the first thing we'll do is we'll give it the, uh, the regular voltage in again to see our normal waveform. So nothing's changed there. Um, same, same thing there. So we'll turn that off. See the voltage didn't change. The waveform looks fine. Everything like that. So now we're going to go back up to the max that our DAC would be able to give us, which is uh, four or two volts RMS. So keep an eye on this, and also look over here. You're going to see that, um, all right, so this hasn't changed. It went from negative 30 to negative 29.5. That's a negligible change. Remember before it was going to negative 60. So it's staying basically exactly the same. And over here, you can see that our crossover distortion is gone. So enabling the bug bias circuit has completely eliminated all of these problems um, with the overload characteristic. And the other thing I wanted to show you was if we go back to sensing our current over here, remember we maxed out at negative, or at 40 milliamps I think before. All right, so here we are, we're back at our normal bias of 15-ish or whatever. This is creeping back up because the power supply sagged a little bit with that overload but it's coming back up a little bit here. Um, there's a big time constant in my power supply with the capacitance multiplier, and so if you overload it for a long period of time, the power supply will sag slowly and then come back up. Anyway, so remember that this went from 15 to 40 with the other circuit, but now our tubes are not turning off anymore, so let's see what happens. It went from 15 to 61 milliamps, so our output tubes are really cooking right now, and that could consider that to be a bad thing, but what that is is they're just not turning off anymore. So that's the magic of class AB. You can idle at 15 and then both your tubes can scream on up to 60 milliamps in overload and so provide a lot more power in those brief overload times and you can see that uh, goes right on back down to 15, but that that's uh, that's bug bias in action there, you guys. So you can see that the grid voltage, when bug bias is enabled, uh, stays the same in overload. Um, it doesn't take that negative dip. The crossover distortion is gone. I mean, it's basically a square wave generator now. I mean, this thing has no crossover distortion. If I could just crank this up to some absurd level, basically our amp is now a square wave generator. This is an AB amp with no loop feedback, you guys with zero crossover distortion overload. So anyway, that's a practical demonstration of how that works. So anyway, I'd also as a side note, I just finished this amp up. I'm really happy with it and I just optimized the square wave so you can see my nice square wave there. Anyway, good little amp. All right, that's the whole video, that's it.